Hello, this is Dr. Tom Groover of Boulder Chiropractic Clinic. I have written a case study on a patient with Meniere's disease, and uh, this patient achieved a 300 to 400% improvement in her condition, and would like to summarize the case study that I have published on my website, and a link to that is available in this web post but also below this video if you're watching this in a video player uh, in the notes area. If you can't find that, you can just go to bouldercarpracticclinic.com and go to our blog and you will, you'll find it there under this title, 300 to 400% improvement in Meniere's. Now, Meniere's is a craniocervical junction disorder and that means it involves the, a problem with the place in the upper neck where it joins the base of the head. Misalignments of that area uh, are called upper cervical subluxations, and these uh, misalignments can cause a lot of neurological complications with the functioning of the spinal cord uh, and the brain stem, and it's this brain stem problem that affects the the hearing and the equilibrium. The upper cervical subluxation complex is something that we specialize here in this clinic. And uh, so I wanna go through uh, this information with you. Now Meniere's disease is a um, syndrome. So it's a collection of symptoms. And those symptoms include fullness of the ear, loss of hearing, uh, tinnitus, dizziness, vertigo, and vomiting. And uh, in Meniere's, it's a large number of these are present. Um, we've treated people with Meniere's and had good results. We've also treated uh, individuals with just a few of these symptoms or maybe just one of them and had really good results. And uh, so, uh, that's something we're used to here in the office and uh, when a person with the full syndrome comes in, uh, it's, it's a very interesting uh, opportunity for us. So we'd like to thank Kathy, the, the patient, for her uh, consent to let us use her information and talk about her a little bit here today. So at our office, we treat our patients through eight phases of recovery. And so the first phase is informed consent where we you know, present what we do, how we do it, why we do it, what could be the potential side effects or complications, so on and so forth. And then we, uh, the patient uh, has a chance to ask all their questions and then we come up with a, a working plan about how we are going to relate to each other. And then we work together in, in cooperation as partners uh, to, to solve the case. And in this case, uh, this uh, patient was very successful at doing this. So we begin with informed consent. And then the next stage is differential diagnosis. So we go through and do a holistic screening of every major joint, nerve, and muscle in the body and find out where the dysfunctions exist and make a problem list. And then we uh, do a regional evaluations of each region. So when we do these evaluations of each region, these are confirmatory evaluations where we actually identify what is the problem, what's causing the muscle weakness, what's causing the pain, what's causing the breakdown in structural symmetry uh, and breakdown in functional symmetry and so on. So we confirm our diagnosis and then based on that confirmation, we're able to give very specific corrective care. And the idea is to correct and then to stabilize because that's how healing happens, is through stabilization of the correction. So now the benefit is not just what some people would call a chiropractic adjustment. It's in actually correcting the misalignment, stabilizing that so that it can heal. So those are the next phases of care. And then once we've experienced healing to a certain extent, we could say 
uh, over time with stabilization of the healing that a person is well and it's our job just to to maintain you so that you stay well so uh, here are the symptoms uh, the patient reported uh, when she came in she had six out of ten fullness of her left ear now six out of ten ten is the worst things could be zero is the best now this is called the visual analog scale where we come up with these numbers so it's kind of an inverted you know uh, graph uh, where uh, the the zero is the best and the 10 is the worst instead of the other way around uh, her fullness of her ear became more intense and frequent and led to hearing loss and dizziness her hearing loss was an eight and it was in her left ear her tinnitus on the left ear was five and she said the tinnitus would drive her crazy at night and it would compel her to sleep with a fan on in the room as a white noise distraction uh, she had seven dizziness which um, became more severe and would transform into vertigo her vertigo she reported as a 10 out of 10 and she says that vertigo began nine years previous as a sudden attack while practicing yoga she was performing the uh, pose trikonasana and uh, it was as if an exter external force threw her to the floor and uh, her original vertigo symptoms involved spinning of the environment which prevented her from walking or doing anything and at the time of her first visit to our clinic uh, she still had vertigo but she thought her brain and had either adapted to it and she had learned or she had learned to to function with the vertigo her nystagmus was a 10 and she had 10 cyclic vomiting that would occur every 20 minutes uh, if it wasn't treated um, other symptoms uh, were uh, which Kathy uh, attributed to uh, two previous automobile collisions. One was uh, 33 years previous, and in uh, that collision damaged her neck, shoulder, back, and broke seven ribs and gave her a concussion. And the second collision um, was about 15 years previous. And uh, the ongoing symptoms she attributed to her car collision uh, where she had a five headache, a one, zero to one uh, jaw pain, six neck pain, one shoulder pain, one to two upper back pain, five low back pain, eight tingling and numbness of her wrists and hands, two knee pain, seven foot pain, two digestion and elimination problems, and five sleep. Her exercise and hobby activities included, and still do, rock and ice climbing, trail running, hiking, skiing, snow shoeing, road biking, backpacking, and photography. Um, she saw an ear, nose, and throat specialist for her Meniere's with no results and has had previous surgeries for her sinus infections. Um, we did our holistic screening examination for her uh, as her first evaluation and she had severe postural distortions when viewed from the frontal plane on an instrument that we call the anatometer instrument and um, it measures the tilt of the pelvis and she was very tilted her pelvis was shifted off to one side her upper back was shifted over to the other side of her center of gravity she had considerably more weight on one side of her body than the other and uh, when we measured her leg lengths uh, she had a sizable physiologic short leg so now that's not an anatomical short leg that's not a bone length difference that's just postural distortion in the frontal plane now all these distortions that I just mentioned are uh, positive for upper cervical subluxation complex so we just confirmed that she has a, an authentic craniocervical junction disorder. Viewing Kathy in the sagittal plane, her um, 
shoulders were rounded forward, her neck was forward, her head was considerably forward. Uh, she had um, a tightness of the anterior muscles of the neck and upper back um, and um, tightness of the muscles at the base of her head and weakness of her deep cervical flexors, her forward benders and weakness of her upper back and neck uh, backward benders, um, extensor muscles. Um, now that has been described as upper crossed syndrome by a man named Yanda. And uh, it's very important to correct that because that's a major complication for the stabilization of the upper cervical spinal correction. So um, the other thing is that uh, her pelvis was uh, anteriorly displaced by a large amount, which meant that she had uh, a pattern in her, uh, her standing posture characterized as swayback or lower cross syndrome by Yonda. And uh, that is a lot of loading forces on the facet joints of the low back. So these postural distortions ha had to be corrected for her to have you know, spinal stability. And when we say spinal stability, we mean the ability to load the spine evenly so there's no weight coming from above below that's um, to the front or back of the center of the spine to the right to the left, that it's just sitting uh, right on the spine and uh, that their joints are lined up and they're moving properly. Her ankles resisted dorsiflexion, bending upward, and that's characteristic of subluxations of her ankles. Um, Kathy had a very complex pelvis injuries. Uh, the, the ilium on one side was punched up toward her head and the other side it was opened up like a book. And um, also uh, along with that we were able to find that her one side sacroiliac joint was fixed and the other one was hypermobile. A, a complicated pelvis that uh, is oftentimes not understood very well. Uh, the whole spine was restricted in the direction of right rotation and also um, posterior to anterior motion. So there were big problems going on that we see, that we could see that were related to subluxations in her upper cervical spine, lower neck, upper back, low back, sacroiliac joints, pubic symphysis. The carpal joints of her wrists were they weren't moving and very well and so we knew she had uh, wrist subluxations uh, probably from her motor vehicle collision. When she opened and closed her jaw it deviated from side to side and she had pain when we touched her temporal mandibular joints. Uh, these are consistent with temporal mandibular joint dysfunction. Neurological muscle testing revealed specific subluxations throughout her spine, including L1 through L5. Also, her upper five ribs were misaligned, and um, the three joints in her shoulder, each side of her, of her body, were um, misaligned as well. So my assessment was that Kathy's Meniere's disease was caused primarily by the subluxation of her upper cervical spine and significantly complicated by the large distribution of misalignments or subluxations throughout all the rest of her body. And uh, my treatment plan was to perform regional evaluations and so these, would, these included in the following sequence, um, cervical, that's one, pelvis, lumbar, thorax, rib cage, that's another one, we call that the core evaluation, um, uh, those first two, shoulders, elbow, temporal mandibular joint, wrist, and hand, and then we performed uh, vectored chiropractic procedures based on uh, what we call mirror imaging adjusting, uh, where we uh, figure out the direction of resistance, and then we oppose that with our work. Um, we also worked with her on how to stand and sit and bend over and how to load her spine when she's standing and sitting and bending over so that we could create stability uh, with the way that she uses her body 
Stabilization is really important so that when you load the spine and other joints in the body that they don't misalign, that they hold together because the stabilizer muscles are working along with the mover muscles. Uh, we did neuromuscular acupuncture to release muscle contraction and inflammation and pain. Manual therapy, therapeutic exercise to help balance out her muscular imbalances. Cervical extension traction to try and help her develop her neck curve better and, and gait and station training. So we, we follow in this office uh, barefoot biomechanics. We like to teach you how to create and maintain very strong arches and strong ligaments and tendons and muscles uh, regarding your feet and ankles so they can stay aligned and work very well. Um, so with each regional evaluation, then following that, we did a corrective work on those regions along with follow-up at each visit, each regional evaluation and uh, visit for treatment. We followed up everything that we did previously. We examined these areas and uh, perform corrective procedures as needed. Um, much of the details of this whole process are included in my entire case uh, study. And uh, my prognosis, uh, here's my current prognosis. We did a reevaluation after 11 months. And it is that Kathy continues to improve and her joint corrective care will continue to stabilize and heal over time. Her treatments and recoveries are complicated by the long-term harm done by her unresolved motor vehicle collision injuries. These complications will require lifelong monitoring and follow-up for her to continue improving and managing any permanent injuries which remain after a reasonable period of follow-up. Kathy's Meniere's was most likely caused and complicated by 15 to 33 years of untreated or unsuccessfully treated motor vehicle collision injuries, including injuries of the upper cervical spine and the whole body, uh, including her spine, rest of her spine and extremity joints. Uh, the neurological feedback to her central nervous system from these spinal and extremity joint subluxations was overwhelming and made it difficult for her to function, adapt, and cope. More treatment frequency and duration are required by such demanding complications. Uh, the positive clinical outcomes from the correction of her upper cervical subluxation complex strongly suggest causal relationship between Meniere's disease, craniocervical junction disorder, and her upper cervical subluxation complex. Kathy has experienced a 300 to 400 percent improvement in her Meniere's disease symptom, symptoms which has dramatically improved the quality of her life. Her progress should continue with further stabilization and healing of her injuries. As with many motor vehicle collision injuries, Kathy's prognosis for full recovery is uncertain. She will probably require less frequent follow-up visits in the future with long time periodic monitoring. So again, if you'd like to see the details of this case study, and see all the progress charts that we show. There are tables that show her progress over time. They're all published there. And uh, please share this story if you have people that you know or love that uh, suffer from Meniere's disease or any of the individual symptoms that, um, that we see as a part of this syndrome. Um, if you suffer from Meniere's disease, we hope we have a chance to help you. Um, you can contact us by phone at 303-442-7772. Our um, email address is info at bouldercarpracticclinic.com. And you can visit our website at bouldercarpracticclinic.com. Uh, we have openings for new patients, for chiropractic student and doctor interns. Uh, we do chiropractic consulting and training. And if you are a patient that would be, that is in need of this care and you're uh, very far away from our clinic, we'd be happy to be your chiropractic consultant where we work with your chiropractor and, uh, or one that we could find and take them through many of the procedures that we do here in our office. And uh, we should be able to see some pretty good results. So thank you and good health to you.